I've been involved with pediatric heart transplant now for over three decades. It has been incredibly rewarding to watch so many of these children grow and grow up to be adults. Uh, we have a very well organized transition program here where we transition our pediatric patients over to the adult side and that's incredibly rewarding. Uh, that didn't exist when I first started training simply because we didn't get them there but now we do and we do on a regular basis. Pediatric heart transplant station that started out back in the 80s as heroic therapy and somewhat of a novelty has now become accepted therapy for end-stage heart disease in pediatric patients. The number of patients to which heart transplant is offered has ballooned as more and more transplants are considered. It comes up with you have such a limited donor supply. We're one of the few centers around the country that does positive cross-match transplants. We've been doing it for nearly two decades now. Sensitization is a major problem in pediatric transplantation because it limits access to the donor pool. Positive cross-match transplants have been shown to have good outcomes compared to negative cross-match transplants, but there have been studies that show that once a patient is very highly sensitized, their outcomes are worse. So we need to find a way to make their outcomes similar to negative cross-match transplant patients while not having them wait forever on the wait list. So we've been funded by the American Heart Association and Enduring Hearts to study contemporary approach to desensitization in pediatric transplant candidates. And that's our goal is to, one, develop a nice standardized approach to desensitization so that we can improve our knowledge and that can then help us with our treatment decisions. We're forever in the pursuit of improving outcomes for our patients. We hope that they can go on to live long, meaningful lives. And that is what motivates us to continuously innovate and continuously find ways to make their lives better. What we've learned over the years about the Fontan palliation is that it's not only isolated to the cardiovascular system, but that other systems are also involved. With the passive flow, you get, unfortunately, some congestion in the liver, so the liver becomes the bystander. And so the idea behind the comprehensive Fontan Clinic is to look at the patient as a whole. So we're able to utilize um, experts in other fields from our university to help address some of the complications that come along with the Fontan palliation. We here at Washington University and St. Louis Children's Hospital are in a unique situation where we are able to provide um, a combined heart-liver transplant, which is not offered at many institutions across the country. And then two, we partner with our adult colleagues in order to manage more of the adult medical problems that can come along with Fontan failure. We're one of the few centers that has expertise in how this works and, how, and what the outcomes are and how to manage them um, long term. Every patient is evaluated by our palliative care team. That is a team of specialists whose entire job it is to make sure we never lose sight of what's the most important thing to that family and how to best get not just the, the patient but also the parents and the siblings and the extended family safely through transplant uh, and happy with the outcome. They help us keep the communication open and I think our multidisciplinary team here is pretty unique both in how well it works together and what it can accomplish. I really feel like the collaborative environment here at St. Louis Children's Hospital, uh, Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, is uh, one of its greatest strengths. Uh, really, we work very closely as a cardiothoracic surgery team with the pediatric heart failure team. With this multidisciplinary approach, we're able to take care of each unique patient on an individual basis. We're able to really determine the patients uh, who need additional support, especially those who may spend more time on the wait list uh, such that we can um, um, support them with mechanical circulatory support uh, for sometimes extended periods of time so that they can really go into their transplant in as good of a condition as they can possibly be in. Really sets them up for success postoperatively. Fortunately, we're at an, a center with a significant experience supporting even some of the most complex uh, patients, uh, multiple prior operations, um, complex reconstructions, and really may require multiple organ transplants, such as livers, making things just much more complex. I've seen some great improvement in our outcomes. Uh, the reality is, is those outcomes still aren't as good as we'd like them to be. Uh, a transplanted heart in a child, depending on their age, can last anywhere from 12 to 20 years. 
but we really want it to last 50 or 70 years. One of the exciting things about being here at St. Louis Children's is that we have always been on the forefront of pediatric heart transplant research, and we continue to be. And I'm hoping that uh, St. Louis Children's, which has already paved the way and with so much research in pediatric heart transplantation, can continue to do that.